Hi YouTube, how are you doing? I'm doing great, not too bad. Well, I could be a little better. I'm going to make a turkey, cook a turkey. I'm not going to make a turkey, but I'm going to cook a turkey later. Um, language is really something else, isn't it? Um, over on my Facebook, I shared a couple memes about masturbation. I thought was humorous. Let me pull them up so I can um, tell you exactly what they were. I'm going to talk about just the words and the meanings of uh, give you a little bit of insight on what I believe about it and medical science says about it. Anyway, let's see. Maybe I didn't share it. Let's see. I might have. Well, one I did share. No man is free who is a slave to the flesh. Which is very true no matter what. Ah, Sun Zoom said... Many will beat their meat, though few, few will truly defeat it. Okay, let's see. Oh, here it is. It's Jesus. He's sitting there. I keep sending hurricanes, but they keep masturbating. I just think that's hilarious because um, I have somebody that I used to listen to frequently that I found out like four years after I was listening. And the only reason I started is because he actually was frustrated and crying about friends that had been backstabbers. And I was looking for um, like, oh, some kind of pastoral emotional support or some kind of friendship and um, understanding so I could pass on videos or people that Doug might like trying to open his uh, um, friendship base to somebody a little more in depth to what he's been surrounded by typically so but that didn't work out too good Four years into the thing, I find out he's like, um, whatever. I mean, if people want to watch porn, you know, watch it. But just remember, when you're viewing another person, even if you think that they're adult and their mind is set and they're freely giving you that view, it may not be what you think. And um, most people in the porn industry have been sexually abused as children. It's a fact. But people don't care about any of that. So I my topic today is masturbation. The word, of course, master, we know, right? The word bation, libation, is liquid. It's um, a definition is in honor of a deity. That That's a big deal, right? What I just said is a huge, huge big deal. Just a minute. Who are you honoring with your fluids? <laughs> you know? So, huh? um, also, there are negative effects such as uh, emotional effects and um, procreation problems with misuse of that. So, oops, want to say hello? Oh, that's Hello. his name. I sent Constantine a uh, video I just sent you, but they won't let. I put a message on it. They won't let me message anybody. Okay, I'll I'll look Hi. up and <laughs> bad old Doug here. They banned yeah. me for life. Yeah, on Hi, Dan. on Facebook. Hi, Dan. Yeah, 
I'm going to contact a friend of ours that's having trouble. Well, Doug can't can't um, contact him through Facebook, and they used to talk like every day, um, just about. He's the uh, guy is a uh, attorney over in Russia. He's not. Or wait, he's a lawyer. He doesn't like being called. Or wait, no, the other way around. One or the other. In in his country, there's, okay, I think it's attorneys work for the state and lawyers work independently. I think I got that right. So he's independent. So in other words, like most of these jokers in my country, whether you call them attorneys or lawyers or scum of the earth, are going to pick up any case. And try and win it, whether somebody's righteous or not, you know. So, anyway. So, back to that libation and the liquid in the deity that you serve. I'm typically referring to as wine being poured out or, um, you know, that type of thing. But that type of language is actually used in ceremonies concerning children in most major religions, and people don't really understand um, the Eucharist that they partake in when you eat the body and the blood. You know, they don't. They think they do. But they don't. They they don't have a clue how close sexuality, which is a part of all our personal makeup, is a part of major religions. The priests, the pastors, the rabbi, they all know. You damn right they do. Why else do you think that um rabbi are talking about uh dark magic and the Kabbalah, the Kabbalion and your uh, chakras and all the rest of that, unless you learn how to master things for yourself, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I mean, all I can do is give people the information that it actually takes away from you especially if it's misplaced sexuality, like through lust or um, whatever. So, yeah, just trying to pass on true information to people and the meaning of things so you totally understand what you're doing. But when somebody tells me that they're... Uh, uh, have faith in God and then are going to teach uh, there's nothing wrong with pornography to the next generation. You lost me in a big way because some of us realize the pains and sorrows we've been through in our life, um, if not with by us by other people that we've been involved with. And we know what's up. So if people are ignorant or ignoring that fact for their own gains, there's really nothing you can do about it. You can just tell them the way things are. You know, you have a safe harbor. Yeah, you do. That's uh, the most high spirit taking care of your innocent heart while you're in a fleshy situation, you know, knowing who you are inside and not being a part of the world like that. And there's nothing wrong with loving the world. If you don't love the world, you really don't have a say-so in it. I'm talking the human family, 
not the trees and the rocks and, you know, which is cool. I love that, too. But I'm talking about people, the world, you know. But how are you loving on them, <laughs> you know? I had to say that because years ago there was a guy who, uh, oh, was said to be the head gang-stalking Luciferian in the United States, which wasn't true, of course, because I know where I live. But, you know, uh, anyway, this joker was uh, saying things like loving on his dog. The, the words just didn't sound good to me. I took a look at my little dog at the time. I thought, well, I love you and I pet you, but I don't love on you. Just my thoughts. So every once in a while that comes to my mind. <laughs> so, yeah. Hmm. So is masturbation good or bad? Could go either way, depending on where your mi mind is and your heart and your soul, if you're actually in contact with uh, the parts of yourself that you can't control. And uh, like I say, where your mind is at. If you're, if you're just pleasuring yourself because somebody else turned you on. It's probably not the best way to go about things if you have like built up uh, fleshly desires with no safe harbor to go, nowhere to go. Um, well, most people have a safe harbor. They just don't take their boat there, <laughs> you know, they just go with the flow, the way things are on the planet, if this all makes sense to you, I hope I, you find a little something of a of little bit of help or consoling or some kind of understanding in my words of love towards people, you know, and trying to kind of give you a little bit of emotional support in areas where you might be needing that, you know. Type of things that actual pastors and ministers should be speaking about, like I'm speaking about it, but don't know enough about human physiology to actually go in deep to know what they're talking about. How can somebody act like a practitioner of any science and not know the science. I mean, these people are dealing with souls and bodies and spirit, the three part, the three parts of us that they usually only know slightly one part, not even their selves well enough to speak on how I should do things, you know, or you. Yeah. Might be a little bit of noise. I didn't, um, I did tell Doug to write that guy's name down. I didn't know if he was going to bring it in right away. I, not, I'm not going to do it right away. I told him I'd probably do it tomorrow, but no big deal. Yeah, anyway. Um, I'll get back on track what I'm thinking here, you know. Isn't the fact of the masturbation or the porn, it's the passing it on in the human family like it isn't harmful because it certainly can be. And we all know if you've had children that 
it can become a problem. Or if you have a spouse that has, is problematic with uh, watching porn or something, I know families that have been destroyed by it. I mean, for me personally, I'm not going to let somebody touch me that got turned on by somebody else. But that's my integrity. I can't speak on somebody else's, but I do know that you will lack that integrity if you listen to somebody else who's teaching you that you aren't going to lose a part of that by doing it. You know, it's decisions we make. You know. Do you have any self-control? And at times when you don't, where do you go with that? You know, spiritually. Is spirit involved at all in that situation? You know? I'm not talking nudity's wrong. You know? I'm not talking about the wrongs or the rights of the situation. I'm talking about the woes of the situation and what it does to us mentally and physically. Our physi ad, ad, <clears throat> Okay, one more try. Our physiology mixed with the spirit within ourselves does what we do to our bodies does things to us our physical self and our spiritual self period and when you have uh, people teaching that that isn't a fact they are lying to you for their own pleasure <laughs> you know? oh my goodness you know? Okay, would I have the right to get mad at a man if, um, say, he came to my house and he was turned on or whatever physically? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because when I walk into a room, I sort of cross my arms. I don't like go shaking my stuff all over the place and if somebody's looking at me the wrong way that's on them and I ne I don't dress revealing to attract that type of attention so if somebody goes there you just went the wrong place and don't blame me you know and I brought it to people's attentions, too, and then they try and back out of it. And they're already lying to themselves and everybody else. That's how brutal I am with this. I don't play at all. You know? Now, if I called you to myself, well, we both would be stupid. You know? There's going to be a little bit of noise from the pump in a minute here, so I think, pretty sure, but we'll just wait. It takes about a minute for it to shut off when it gets the water pressure builds up. Oh. Yeah, my, my self-control is like no other and there is a certain spot my only safe harbor is God and that is how I am known and that's how people find out how to get to know me because there is an area of my mind that is impenetrable from outside forces like that. I'm shielded and protected. I, I honed that skill for myself, for my self-control. 
which I think is a wise thing to do, you know. I think people are, especially when they're married, they're just flat out cheating on each other if they're watching porn together. You know, it's just the way it is. They're unfaithful to each other and their selves, even if they're both in accordance with the situation. I believe the man has the responsibility to lead his wife in the correct direction and that to me isn't the right way i'll never be led by a fool never more than an opinion life experience <coughs> <coughs> excuse me Any thoughts on what I'm talking about? <laughs> I don't care if you think I'm right or wrong. I know. I know what's up with people. I know the minds of humans and their hearts well enough to be able to speak on what I'm putting down. And if somebody can't pick it up and know that it's of value, eh, oh well. <laughs> Next time, buddy, try, try again, you know. I never give anybody a reason to think that I'm out of sorts in any way. I'm totally transparent in my thoughts for people on here. And I started doing that a long time ago, and it's sort of against my nature because I'm totally seclusive. But... I wanted it to be perfectly understood. Um, my life experiences so people can kind of maybe work through some of their own, you know. It's a choice every single day. It's a choice, isn't it? What we do in our lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was listening to uh, P-Funk this morning, and he was talking about um, how the African people basically have been torn apart by the white man and then ignored for their accomplishments. That's a fact. That's truly a fact. They have the most one of the largest empires in the world, the richest land. And um, it's just like the qualities with the Native Americans that, um, well, when, when people aren't allowed to be in charge of their own countries because of the people that want to control and rule out of greed over other people, there's always going to be a master and slave type of situation. And to me, what is still going on with the Native Americans that should have their own president over our country, like these aren't brilliant, brilliant people just like anybody else in the world. You know, when that happens in our society and people just continue to ignore it, you know. I was um, talking about, I'll touch a little bit on this. There's a German society, some of you know about the Vril Society that started back um, before the 40s, but it was really well known in the 40s said to have moved to Antarctica 
with the Nazi party and all that was the breeding of um, blonde haired blue eyes that they um, cherish more than they do other people and you're going to see this through societies of um, controllers and the reason for this is the first start of the dark cabal was from a family that we'll just call the Khazarians or the Canaanites that ended up mostly um, described as Jews, but really hiding deep in the Slavic nations and even way up into uh, Norway and the Chinese are connected. And what this society does it's not only the witchcraft and the dark cabal, but what they do is their breeding within their family was to keep, and what they did was to breed. The, the light came out of the dark in the flesh and in the ethereal. Um, and it's, it's a fact. And I'm not saying that the black was bad. That isn't what it was. This is, I'm talking about one entity that was represented with dark skin and then bred himself out of the darkness into the Slavic and Germanic bloodlines that are, or even Russian, which is considered, or Siberia, like the upper step when people came out of Egypt and um, in their migration. And what they did intentionally to hide the coloring of their skin and their family bloodline that is still considered the dark cabal to this day. And that's who those people are. And why they did that, the Aryan race, why is it so important to them? That's why. And every other person of color is in danger, even, even if you're pure white with blue eyes or whatever. And they, they tell you you're more prized. Yeah. For what? You know? Breeding, perhaps? What I'm telling you is all very true, and it's still going on to this day. Yeah. And that's why people of color are in danger like that, because... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> They think they're going to incarnate again, keeping it in the Caucasian situation, and they don't want any throwbacks. That's why it was spoke about in the scriptures of how, like, um, I can't remember which, was it um, Rachel, or one of, one of the women in the Bible had a, maybe it was Naomi. No, I don't know. One of the women in the Bible, I can't remember right now, had a child that I think it was Noah. That wasn't the color of the other people in the family. They talk about it, but there's more documentation on it from what I'm trying to tell you. is a, It started a long time ago, and that's why it started so they could hide. Then you end up with somebody like Jacob Rothschild, totally white, blue-eyed, but came from a dark-skinned people originally. You know, say so just like back in Egyptian days, you had ones that were considered not-so-good deities and ones that were considered decent, you know? But I'm telling you, that's the reason for that society. And the breeding of people 
is still going on today. It's a really important thing for them not to go beyond. That's why they talk about the seventh and eighth or the eighth. The seventh is part of the eighth generation or whatever because these bloodlines, they have to be careful not to have those throwbacks that I'm talking about, you know. Well, I'm going to get this uploaded. I hope uh, I touch some people's hearts. If not, that can't be helped. Whatever. It's like the Gasol prayer, you know. Anyway. Well, I appreciate you joining me. I'll talk to you soon. Have a really good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.